it's probably the most iconic sequence in cycling cinematography, the opening scene from the 1977 documentary A Sunday in Hell about Paris Roubaix. And it shows a mechanic washing a team bike. And it's a scene that you're going to see repeated dozens of times over at any team hotel after a professional bike race today, 35 years later, for several important reasons. First, of course, they need to keep the bikes looking good for the team sponsors, but they also need to make sure that the bikes work as well as possible. And a clean bike is always going to work better, and it's also going to last a lot longer because that grit tends to wear away bike components. But most importantly, cleaning a bike lets you get a really close look at it and inspect it and spot any problem areas that might cause you trouble down the road. So for that reason, I encourage you to wash your bike at least once a week just to keep an eye on things, make sure nothing is going to fail on you by surprise. To clean your bike, you're going to need a few basic tools. Now, the obvious ones are a bucket with soapy water. I'd like to use warm water, but I just use dish soap, nothing fancy. And of course, a hose so you can rinse stuff off. Now, to actually clean your bike, you'll need a couple sponges, a nice soft bristle brush, to, brush that can get into the nooks and crannies, a harder brush for getting at the chain and things like that, and it's kind of handy to have one of these brushes that gets in between cogs and things like that. Then you're going to want some degreaser. Uh, this is Orange Peel's Citrus Degreaser made by Pedros. Good stuff, it won't damage the frame's paint uh, or any of the bearing seals. Now, that's really important. And something to put the degreaser in, I just cut up an old water bottle and something to apply it. Just an old paintbrush and, of course, a couple of towels and rags are really handy to have as well. And a couple of luxury items, I guess this is a chain holder. This keeps the chain uh, turning smoothly without scratching the frame paint. And the most expensive item is a repair stand. This is a park fork mount stand. I highly recommend it because it lifts the bike off the ground uh, so you're not bending over all the time. That's better for your back. And it also lets you get at things without too much difficulty. It just makes cleaning a lot quicker and more convenient. Here, I'm using my cyclocross bike to demonstrate. As you can see, it's covered in grit and mud. When a bike's this dirty, the first thing you should do is use the hose to rinse off most of the dirt so that it's not there to scratch the frame as you wipe it down with a sponge later. Next, I mount the frame in the stand, take both wheels off, and install the chain holder. This isn't essential, but it does make cleaning the bike easier and keeps the chain from scratching the paint. Now, I pour a little degreaser into the cutoff water bottle. It's really convenient to put this in the seat tube water bottle cage so it doesn't get knocked over while you're working on the bike. Then I use the paintbrush to apply the degreaser to the chain, the chain rings, and the derailleurs. The parts should be dry before you apply the degreaser, and it's important to let it soak in for a few minutes. You should also put the degreaser onto the cassette. Try to lean the wheels so that the cassette is facing downwards so the degreaser doesn't drip on the tire or onto the hub bearings. Using the stiff brush, I then scrub the parts with soapy water. This really helps dislodge any big oily residue. And don't forget to scrub the cassette. Now it's time to clean the rest of the bike. With the sponge and soapy water, I start with the highest point of the bike and work my way down. Make sure to clean the bike from both sides, and don't forget to get in behind the fork and under the bottom bracket. Use the soft bristle brush to get into more intricate parts, like my cyclocross brakes. I also like to run the chain through a silky sponge. I also use the soft bristle brush to clean the rims and the tire so it'll be easy to check later on for cuts in the tread. And don't forget to clean the hubs between the spokes too using a sponge. When it's time to rinse the bike, start from the top down again and aim the hose downwards. Avoid spraying directly into any of the bearings. You'll find that they're going to last a lot longer if you avoid doing yep. that. To finish off, I use an old towel to wipe the saddle, handlebars and frame down so they all dry a little bit quicker. I also try to dry the chain off so it doesn't get any chance to rust. Then it's time to put the wheels back on the bike and let it sit for a while to air dry. Here you can see just how clean the bike gets using this simple method. Now you can give it a once over and look for any problems. For example, here I can see that my cyclocross training tires are getting pretty worn and it's about time to replace them. Now all you need to do is lube the chain and maybe the pulley wheels and some other vital parts that start to get sticky after a while and uh, check that the gears work and uh, you're off to the races. For the cyclo.ca, I'm Chris Westwood.